rest, but he always leaves us in good hands. Amen. 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 With a good word. Yes. So, without further ado, I'm going to bring Miss Lucy Thompson here. Sometimes, you know, we don't like to go to certain places like to the mission shelf and all that. But he went for 20 plus. So one day my head began to talk, not my heart. And I said, well, I'm going with him. I went. And it's not like here at Salvation Temple, all of you are looking good, smelling good, and acting nice. <laughs> you know. So I went once. And I haven't been back. <laughs> and while I was there, my head was saying, if I get out of here, I'm not going back. <laughs> but for him, he was where he wanted to be. It was all about winning souls. For yeah. me. He never stopped going, and I never went back. I would like to present to you my husband for 47 plus years, Ms. William Thompson.
before he has an assignment for me. Probably a week, maybe two weeks ahead of time. And the way I know it's the Lord, because the devil wouldn't tell me what the Lord is telling me. You know, he wouldn't tell me things that's going to benefit me or somebody else. He would always try to bring something. The devil brings something in your mind that's going to hurt somebody or pull somebody down. But, but, but the Lord, he, uh, he prepares you, whether you realize it or not. He prepares you for what's coming and what he wants you to do. And before I got this assignment from Pastor Scott, the Lord was already talk, talking to me a week or before about what he wanted me to share with you all. And so, you know, I didn't rush to read the scriptures or nothing like that you know, on it or study on it. But it, he kept feeding my mind with the same thing over and over and over. Over and over and over. I mean, see, when the Lord talked to me, I don't know when he talked to you, but he talked to me early in the morning yeah. before I get out of bed. Come on. You know, and he wakes, you know, I wake up, and sometimes I said to myself, Lord, let me go back to sleep. <laughs> we can talk about this when I get up. <laughs> you know? but, uh, but that's the way he works with me. And he's been doing that for years and years. You know, I didn't understand it at first. I just thought something was just going to cross my mind. You know, I didn't know yeah. really it was the Lord. But it was. It was him telling me what to do. So his assignment for me to give to us today is found in St. Luke chapter 10. And I wasn't going to give the, the title to it until I got down to uh, the last verse here that I'm going to talk about, uh, it says that uh, my title is We Have the Power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. See? Amen. Come on. We have the power. Amen. That's, that's, that's basically what I'm going to be talking about. Because when we are born again, children of God, anointed of God, love God, we have power. Yeah. See? A lot of brothers and sisters don't realize that. Mm -hmm. And so their lives is defeated. And then, you know, they uh, may not realize it, but then if they do realize it a lot of times, they don't go, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. they, they don't walk through it. They don't carry it out. Mm -hmm. See? God has given us all things, you know, we've heard it a lot of times that pertains to life and godliness. Yes, sir. We've been given all of that. Okay? So first, let me pray. All right? Before I start running my mouth too long. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bring forth your word today. Lord, we just thank you that the eyes of our understanding is going to be enlightened. We're going to know what is the hope of our calling, and we're going to know what is the riches of your glory that you have for us in Christ Jesus. Father, thank you for ears to hear, hearts to receive, and understanding shall come forth. And we will always give you the praise and glory, honor, and thanksgiving for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do today and forevermore in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, now, you know, you know, I, I love the Word of God. Amen. You know, that's why I, when I come to church, I bring my Bible. <laughs> I bring my Bible. I don't just, you know, just depend on the video here. Because sometimes when you read it, read it, you might see something that you might want to underline. You might want to highlight to go back and look at it again. See? So the Bible, you know, when, when we used to go to the mission a lot, I always get up and tell the guys, I said, the B-I-B-L-E is basic instruction before you leave this earth. That's what, I, that's what I used to tell them, you know. It is. And you can find every answer that you need in the Word of God. Amen. Because the Word of God is instruction for you. It's instruction. You want to know how to get healed? You, you know, 
the word of God tells you. Mm -hmm. you. You want to get rich? You, you want money? You want whatever? The word of God tells you how to do that. Amen. Amen. But the problem, I believe, a lot of times we don't, either we don't believe it or we don't just accept it because we don't understand, you know, we don't understand it. But the Bible is your instructions on this earth. If you want to prosper in any kind of way, if you want to be victorious in any kind of way, this is the way you do it. It's through the Word of God. Amen. You find out what the Word of God says, okay? Amen. Amen. And uh, so what I wanted to share with you guys, like we have the power. We have the power to do whatever God wants us to do. Amen. You don't have to come down here anymore to show us what to do. Yeah. You got to, you know, get in the book and see what he said and do it, okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's look at St. Luke chapter 10, beginning of verse 1. I'm going to read. Because, I, I mean, I, I do a, a lot of reading in my, in my Bible here and in my, you know, presentation. And when I'm speaking, I, I like to do a lot of reading in it. Because that way it won't be all my words and be, you know, if you, you want an argument, then argue with the word, argue with the Lord, you know. The verse 1 says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventies, and also had set them two and two before his face in every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is plenty, is great, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth labors into his harvest. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry ye the purse for scrip, the shoes, and sleep, so, salute no man by the way. But into whatsoever house ye enter, first say peace be in this house, or peace be in this house. And as the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same hour remain eating and drinking such things as they give. For the labor is worthy of his heart. Go not from house to house, and into what sort of city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as set before you. And heal the sick, that are therein, say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. So, the first thing he said, the, the harvest is plenty. Mm -hmm. And we, we know that, right? Amen. Amen. I mean, just look around, you just look, you know, your neighborhood or your job or whatever the case may be. The harvest truly is plentiful. Now, do you realize what he said to do about that? You see what he said to do about that? Pray. Pray that the Lord will send labels into the harvest. And that's what we're lacking. There's no reason this this assembly here is not filled up. Amen. No logical reason. It should be filled up. Amen. If people are doing what the Lord told them to do. Amen. See? Pray that the Lord will send harvest, but will send labors unto his harvest. That means that his harvest could be on your job. Amen. Amen. Or in your neighborhood. See? Or, you know, wherever you are, wherever, get this thing, wherever you are, that's God's harvest if you get, if there's unsaved people there. Amen. People Amen. don't know the Lord. Amen. See? It could be in your neighborhood. I mean, I mean it could be in your family. If, you know, I'm sure it's in, the, it's in my family. I got a bunch of family members. And my harvest is God's harvest and wants me to reach them 
And the only way I can reach them, because a lot of times they won't just accept my words, okay? The best way to reach them is through your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? They know you. See, some of them know you better than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. See? And so, but you got to live that life before them in order to reach them. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing on your job. You know, they, they know you on your job. I mean, if they've been working around you for any time or not, you know, they know that you don't curse. They know you don't drink. You don't gamble. They think something wrong with you. <laughs> you know? And they come up to antagonize you, you know. So I'm, I'm going to make I'm gonna make Brother Bill curse today. Watch this. See? Mm -hmm. But you don't do it. And I had a guy, I was, I was on the job, and uh, I guess the guy was about 30, 40 feet away from me. Back when I was talking to another fella, you know, uh, you know, so we, we wasn't arguing nothing like that. We just, you know, uh, expressing ourselves as we talked. And so the guy came over to me after the guy left him and he hey, Bill, say, uh, I believe I've seen you curse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He saw me. He thought he saw me curse. <laughs> See that? Right, right. I said, well, I'm glad you saw me and didn't hear me. <laughs> you <see? laughs> I'm glad you saw me and didn't hear me because I don't curse. You know, I haven't said a three-letter, four-letter word since I was born again. When I got born again, God cleaned my mouth up. And I didn't have a thing to do with it. God did it. Yes, right. Amen. See? See, so, and your lifestyle is the one that reaches people, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they're watching you, whether, you know, whether you realize or not. Yeah. They all are watching you. Amen. You know, your family members, your friends, your associates, your neighbors, they all are watching you. Yeah. And if, you know, if, if they want to change, then they want to change to be like you. Because, I mean, I've heard... I've had people to walk with me on my job and say, brother, what church do you go to? I want to come to your church. Amen. Amen. And I tell them, they oh, come on, man. You know, so the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. And, you know, and we need to fill this sanctuary up so they can hear the word of God so they can go back out and reach some more audience and people. Amen. You know, keep yeah. that keep that ball rolling, okay? Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's why you know we came to God. You know, when the uh, brother David and I, and another brother, when we used to walk, we've been all over the east side of Detroit. You know, sharing the gospel, man. Amen. You know, we get up and go out and stand on the street corner. You know, and and when we had one of the brothers had a sister. Uh, he's got a sister. That walked with us. We was all in uh, 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 Gratiot and Shane over there by that by that pawn shop, Lima. <laughs> and so uh, we, we, you know, we were working the liquor store between the liquor store and the pawn shop. We walked back and forth the street. And so this sister come up with the idea that she would make a big sign. You know, you know that the sign used to have got milk. Uh -huh. and she made a big sign that said, Got Jesus. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and she's walking up and down the street with that sign. And so this guy, the devil, I'm sure you have a devil in so, so this guy was across the street, well, and they're hollering at him. And I shout out to him, so go, 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 you know, and then pull out of words out of him. And so um, as he was doing it, the police pulled up in, uh, on the, to the red light. And, and the guy was over there, and we were over here. And the police told him, shut up and get on over there so you can hear something. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something. I mean, it's something, man. We, you know, you know, when we uh, pass out tracks, uh, you know, uh, knock on doors, pray for the sick. And, you know, we were bold. We was reaching the harvest. We was reaching the harvest. Mm -hmm. You 
No, all we want to do is to get them to say that Jesus is Lord. He died and he's here and God raised him from the dead. Then it's up to God to take care of him. As long as he confesses it with his mouth and believes it in his heart that he's saved, then he's saved. That's, that was our job right there. We weren't trying to direct them to the church. We want to get them into the kingdom. Right. Amen. And so that's what well, we would do, you know, and we would knock on doors and somebody we we target a place, okay, we'd target a place, like a liquor store or something like that, in and out, in and out. And so one day we were standing out there and this guy came out and so we asked him did he want prayer. He had a little jumbo, we sat it down there, we grabbed him and prayed. And so as we were praying, out on the street, in front of the liquor store, is a, a person upstairs heard us. He looked out the window and hollered out the window. Okay, hey, I'll be there and hold it. Be right there. I'll be right there. So he came down. We prayed for him. As we were praying for him, you know, they come out the liquor store. We grab and we hold our hands, but they said, you know, look at them. You know, like, <laughs> so uh, this girl came out while we were praying. This girl came out and and uh, she said, oh, I want you to pray for my boyfriend. I said, okay, well, we'll pray. I said, what's wrong with him? Well, he got AIDS. Uh -oh. That was way back then. <laughs> so but we prayed for her. We prayed for her, okay? And, uh, we, she, and we asked her if, if, uh, if she wants to go pray for her boyfriend. So we went to the house several occasions to pray for him. And he got healed. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. He got healed. All right? Now, he got healed and started to come to church. He came to church. Salvation took the church a couple times. And you, you know how the devil is. You know, one, 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 you know, that, you know he, he tried to attack him. He attacked him again. Eventually he died. You know, but he did get delivered. He did get Amen. saved. And when we talked to him last, he said, I'm not afraid because I know where I'm going. Amen. 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 The harvest is plenty. Yes. The harvest is plenty. You hear me? Yeah. The Lord just, you know, got me on this, but, you know, that, my message went a little further than just that. But to just, uh, even, even now, my neighbor across the street from me, he's been there about three years, he got sick. Some type of cancer, right? We, we went over, prayed for him, for healing, <coughs> prayed for his deliverance, and we're in agreement with him right now that he is going to walk, and that is his confession that he's going to get up out of that bed and walk. We're in agreement with it. When he comes, start walking, we're going to bring him to church. Amen. 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 See, you see? So, I mean, you see, God, you you, you are really an instrument of God. Yes. Jesus Christ, yes. he's not going to come down here and do the work. You're the ones that's supposed to do the work. We're the ones that's supposed to do the work. Come on. Yeah. You see? All right. So, uh, he said now, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. And we see that all through the Bible. All through the years, from 2000 and now, the labors are still, are still few. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. All right. He said, he told them what to do, to heal the sick, get an area, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. And you are, you do represent the kingdom of God. Because you remember now, the Bible said over in Colossians, I believe, that you've been delivered from the power of darkness. You've been translated over into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes, sir. In whom you have redemption through his blood, yes. even the forgiveness of sins. See that? Yes. So we're in this earth realm now because we're in this flood. But we've been spiritually translated into the kingdom of God. Amen. 
Yes. And we got to learn to think kingdom way instead of earthly yes. 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 Don't be sin conscious. Because that, you know, that tears up everything. You won't let you function. Don't be sin conscious. Be spiritual conscious. Be God conscious. Yes. Be who you are conscious. Yes. Because you, the greater one is inside of you. Yes. Amen? Amen. Okay, so so now we see these 70 went out and they did what the Lord said. And in the 17th verse, says, And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Mm. See that? Amen. He said, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any mean hurt you. Do you believe that? Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't believe that, I never would have went to them crack houses when we went to the <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, you know, you walk up to a crack house, this guy standing out there with Uzi. Mm -hmm. You know, you got your Bible, and then he tried to hide his Uzi. You know, I done saw it before I walked up. You see? Give him a track, talk to him. You know, about the Lord. Yeah. The Lord, I'm going to take the track. Uh -huh. you, you know, you'd be surprised. You will be surprised that how many people, if you go out reaching people, talking to people about the world, you'd be surprised how receptive they are. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Really receptive. Yeah. And the reason they're not in because a lot of times we don't go out and do them. But they're ready. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. Okay? So he says in verse 20, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Your name is written in heaven. Yeah. For those of us, how many of you are born again? How many of you or uh, have your names written in heaven? Amen. What? Thank you, Lord. Your names are written in heaven. Just that, that's like the census they're going to take this year. They're going to go around and take census of every the population. They got a sense in heaven. Glory to God. Yeah. And your name is in the book. Yeah. My name is in the book. Yeah. See? He said, don't rejoice because the devil's supposed to be sub subject to you because. You are more than a conqueror. Yes. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the devil knows that. And he tried to keep us dumbfounded. He tried to keep us from knowing that. That the greater one is in us. That he's defeated. He said, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Yeah. Your name. My name. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. So, uh, so uh, he said, uh, I give you power. The 19th verse. I give you power. What is the power? That's a good question, right? Yeah. What is the power? You, you know, the power is the name. Amen. See? It's the name. That's what the, the, the disciples came back rejoicing for. They saw the demons subject unto them through the name. Not because of five steps to redemption or five steps to healing. See? It's the name. 
And the devil don't want you to know anything about the name. Because it is the name of Jesus that delivers. There is salvation in no other. There is no other name under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. The devil don't want you to know that the name has the power and the devil fights you to realize and understand that the name of Jesus is all you need to defeat the devil. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, he said serpents and scorpions, I give you power over them serpents and scorpions. Yeah. See? And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Glory to God. Amen. That's something, man. Amen. But like I said before, the devil fights us from finding out about the name. He don't want the Christian to find out about the name because once that person that's born again found out, find out the power that's in the name of Jesus, the right. devil is on the run. He yes. is defeated. Yes. And he said, he said, uh, let me see this. He said, nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's right. Praise God. If you know the name. If you have faith in the name. And that's where a lot of times uh, people miss it at. They have the name. They have, they have Every right to the name, mm -hmm. but they don't have no faith in the name. Come on, come on now. See, he said to do everything, whatever you do, do it all in the name. Yeah. And you're doing it all in the name, but when it comes to victory, when it comes to getting the victory over something, you don't use the name. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, you have the, uh, the, the authorization to use the name. But we tried, you know, like healing or something like that. We we, we quote a lot of scriptures. Jim Jeff took out in front of me, boy, I said, he's carried out disease. By his stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. <laughs> That's good, quoting the scriptures. That means you remember. The healing comes through the name. Amen. What you have in the name, the faith you have in the name. Let's go, turn to Mark chapter 16. We're going to look at this. Let me see where I'm at. Beginning at verse 15. This is Jesus after returning back and talking to the disciples. He said in verse 15. After he appeared to the eleven, uh, verse fourteen, as he as he uh, uh, appeared to the eleven, uh, he upbraided them because they unbelieved and hardness of heart, because they believed not them that had seen him after the, he was risen. In verse fifteen, he says, and he says unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Did you, uh, did you catch this? Mm -hmm. He says, These signs shall follow them that believe. Semicolon. Semicolon. Why would they put a semicolon in? See? That, 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 that's saying that, I mean, if you if you look at it the way I see it, it's saying that if you believe in the name, I know it says, uh, if you believe, you can cast out devils. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you drop that semicolon, which the Bible wasn't written with, you know, semicolon and stuff like that. If you if you drop the semicolon, read it like this. 
And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of difference, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You've got that semicolon that's telling you to believe in the name. Mm. Yeah. These signs are going to follow you. Yeah. But if you read it like the King James said, if you believe, these signs shall follow you. You get it? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay? So that, you know, so I, I was reading that and I said, hey, that's not what they're saying. If you believe, you don't cast out devil. He said, if you believe in the name. Mm -hmm. See? Believe in the name, you shall cast out devil. You shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpent, and if they drink any the deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And I'm going to read down verse 19 and 20. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Come on. There you go. Confirming the word yes, with signs following. And, you know, the Lord works with us, too, mm -hmm. confirming what we believe, yeah. confirming his word. He said, the Lord working with them, confirming the word. Because what? They believed in the name. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. All right? So, but I, I want you all to get that point there, because, you know, if you drop the semicolon, it's talking about you put the semicolon after the name. That makes sense to me. Amen. You know, now these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Because I know believers, and I know plenty of believers, and they ain't got them signs following them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't have them signs following them. So it's something, that, it's something that brings the power in. You got the power because your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You automatically have the power that you need, but it takes faith to activate that power. Right. So, okay, let's turn to Acts chapter 3. I'm going to hold y'all too long. Acts chapter 3. We'll show you something here. Because y'all probably already know it anyway, you know. Let me see. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. So they went up to pray at the ninth hour. Verse 2 says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb were carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. To ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Yeah. Now, Peter walked with Jesus, John, they walked with Jesus, right? But what did he say in the name of Jesus? Rise up and walk. He didn't tell them to learn, quote the scriptures. He didn't even tell them to go into the prayer so they can lay hands on them and be anointed with all. Mm -hmm. He said, no, he said that in the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, verse 7, and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle and bones received strength. He, leaping up, stood and walked, entered with them in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. All the people saw him walking and praising God. <laughs> 
No, no. Picture this, what? They've been laying in there daily. People have been going to church praying. People going to church praying, walking by the man, laying there at the bed, with his hands up. I wonder what was their plan about. Yeah. I mean, it's something to think about, right? I mean, you know, I'm sure it's some of the 70 that went out, you know, they done forgot, so they're in there praying too. They were walking by the man every day. So that they, they were that they were diligent church members, but they didn't believe in the name. See, they didn't believe what the name could do. Because if they knew what the if they knew what the name would do, they wouldn't be walking by that man every day. Right. See, and this is, you know, the church, church people, you know, they're good people. <laughs> and we, and we got churches full of good people that don't know what to do. Yeah. See, they don't know what to do. They could be preached to, you know, preached at, preached about. <laughs> but you need to know what to do. Yeah. yeah. When situations arise like this, they're walking by this man. And, and, and they, you know, Peter and John prayed for the man, or, or, or they didn't pray for the man. They told the man to believe him in the name of Jesus. The man got healed, and all the church people come out. <laughs> oh, boy. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, verse 9. And they knew that it was he which uh, sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement mm. at that which had happened unto him. Mm. See? We got the power. Amen. He had, Peter and John had the power. Yeah, yeah. And we got the power. Whether we were accepted or not, we had the power, right? Amen. And the devil do not like for you to have the power. Okay. So, <laughs> because he, he's defeated, right? Okay, so now uh, verse uh, 9 again. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was, it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Him. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch. That is called Solomon's greatly wondering. Still wondering, still amazing, still wondering. You know? And it should have been something that they should have been expecting all the time. Right? And when Peter saw it, he answered them unto the people, ye men of Israel, they marveled. Why, why marvel you at this, verse 12, or uh, why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man walk? Mm -hmm. They didn't even take credit for it. Mm -hmm. See? Why are you going to look on us? We didn't do nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just gave the man the name. Mm -hmm. See? And the man believed the name. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He, then, then he go on and says, um, verse 13, The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, that glorified the, his son, whom, we, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, which, which was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And kill the prince of life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are his witnesses. Verse 16 says, And this name, mm. see, listen, and this name, through faith in this name, has made this man whole. Yeah. <laughs> see that? Yeah. 
Faith in that name has made this man whole. Not because we laid hands on him. Not because we prayed for him. Not because we did something, you know, to initiate him. It's his faith in that name that made him whole. Amen. Amen. And the devil got mad. <laughs> because in the fourth chapter, it says in verse 1, and as they spake unto the people, the priests, captains of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Mm -hmm. And they laid their hands on them and put them in jail overnight. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't read it like that, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. See? And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day. For it was evening time. Mm -hmm. He was talking about Jesus getting people healed in the name and they put him in jail. Mm -hmm. Thank God we don't have that problem here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. Verse 4 said, I'll be a many of them which heard the word believed. Yes. And the number of the men were about 5,000. That. Peter gave the man the name to get healed. Peter preached to the people. 5,000 got saved. Yeah. Yeah. All because Peter stopped mm -hmm. while he was going into the, the temple to pray and gave the man the name. Yes. Yeah. And the man got healed. Yeah. And Peter preached. 5,000 got saved. Well, we need some miracles happening around here. Yeah. Yeah. We need we need to see those things because yeah. you know people are running to things like that because they need miracles. People need miracles in their life, and you are yeah. a miracle worker to them. Once you bring Jesus to, in their life, you change their life. Yeah, you know? Okay, so. So uh, verse 5 says, And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and the elders of the scribes and Annas and the high priests and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were the generals of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem, verse 7, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power? Or by what name have you done this? So the power is in the name. Yeah. Verse 8 says, Be it known unto you all. Peter is saying, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand before you. Oh. Yeah. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is beyond, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, I, I believe I know why the devil hates that name so bad. I know, you know, Jesus done beat up on him and stuff like that. And, you know, took his keys and all that. <laughs> you know, defeated him. But he don't want you to use the name for two reasons. You'll go to Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to show you something. St. Matthew chapter 1. And look at verse uh, 20. 21. Well, let's go back up to 20. It's good here. Verse 20. But while he thought on these things, you know, uh, he found out that Mary was having a baby, and so Jesus, so, you know, God talked to him and all that. But I want to go down here to verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, 
Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. I shall call his name Jesus. The name came from God. He sent but to him by an angel to give to Joseph and Mary the name Jesus. And if you got a good study Bible, in the, in the margin of your Bible, in my Bible, there's a three by the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it says like, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, being interpreted Savior. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so when we know that Jesus being interpreted means Savior. Yeah. And on, in verse 23, it says that again, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. In the margin of my Bible, it says that his name shall be interpreted God with us. So now, the devil hates the name because when you speak the name by faith, what the devil hears is Jesus, Savior, God with us. Yeah. See that? When you speak the name of Jesus, the devil hears, Jesus, Savior, God with us. Jesus is the Savior God. Amen. That's what the devil hears. And, and he can't stand it. <laughs> See? And not only can he stand it, Things can't stand it. Inanimate object things can't stand it once you release your faith in that name. Amen. Because when you speak the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. yeah. he manifests himself. Yeah. Yeah. He brings his presence yeah. on the scene. Yeah. And the devil has a conniption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And things change. Yeah. See? Yeah. 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 See? So, so, you know, after I found that out, I said, wow. So now, when I say the name of Jesus, I said, my, Jesus, my Savior God is with me. Yes. 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 And he's with us. Mm -hmm. we, all, we have to release our faith yes. into the fact that his name, when you mention his name, he manifests himself he brings forth his presence among you. Mm -hmm. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Amen. Because the greater one is with you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sure. This is some good stuff. Baby. Amen. 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 I, I love it. Because, I mean, God is, he's got everything taken care of. Yeah. For us. Yeah. All we got to do is believe and act on it. Yeah. And see, look, when you when, 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 when you understand that, that, is, that the name Jesus represents God, our Savior, is with us, yeah. and you believe that, it activates your faith. Yeah. Yeah. And once it activates your faith, God is pleased because it's impossible to please him without faith. And once you please yeah. God, he wants to hold you. Yeah. 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 Amen. He wants to be with you, brother. Yeah. Sister. Amen. 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 Well, we serve an awesome God, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. He wants to be with us. He wants Amen. to be our child. He wants to be our support. He wants to take care of us. Yeah. That's why he said, if you got any problem, cast all your care upon me, yeah. for I care for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Yes. Yes. That's right. And he's taking care of everything for us. Yes. Everything, everything, everything. Yes. Amen. 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 So, well, time is up. I'm going to wrap up right here at these last scriptures. God 
Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Savior, Savior God, with me, with us. Thank you, Lord God, our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for being among us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your word has gone forth. We thank you, Lord, that we all have ears to hear, Lord. Therefore, your word that has gone forth will not return void, but it's going to accomplish the things that you said it to do. Therefore, Lord, we're going to, we're going to take back what belongs to us because the devil tried to steal that name from us to keep us from using it. We know that they won't even allow it to be used in school, in prayer. They won't even express the name of Jesus. And Lord, we regret to say that some churches don't even use the name of Jesus. So Father, we stand and ask you to correct those things in us, Lord God. So when we speak the name of Jesus, when there's any situation going on, Lord God, and we speak the name of Jesus, we thank you for that total victory, that total deliverance, because... Jesus will come on the scene if we speak it by faith. So, Father, we just thank you right now. For all that you're doing and all that you're going to do, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for bringing many into the kingdom, Lord God. Because we are praying right now that you would send forth laborers into the harvest, Lord God. We claim them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We know that Jesus is soon to return, Lord. And we just want many souls to be to be delivered from the power of darkness, Lord. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Father. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we always give you the praise and glory for the goodness you're doing in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we also lift up those that have been afflicted in their bodies in any shape, form, or fashion, Lord. We speak healing unto them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you are there to heal, Father God. Your word is said that you are our healer. So we thank you for manifesting yourself in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord. We serve an awesome God. I'm telling you. Yes. We, we just got we just gotta believe. Yes. Just got to believe. Yes. All right. We have the power. Has anyone out there that have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? I know everybody here, pretty much everybody raised their hand and their names are written, right? In heaven, right? We say everybody's saved in Jesus' name. Everybody's born again. Everybody's name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So that's what's going to count. Because when you leave this, when you leave this planet, <laughs> when you leave this planet, you're going somewhere. Up or down. Amen. We hope you go up. Yeah. But your name is going, if, if you're going up, your name is written in this book. Yeah. So when you get to that, you know, I'm just saying, when you get to that prayer of the gate, old Peter's going to be there looking at the book. <laughs> so, oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Come on in. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. What do we do with him? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Here we go. This offering time, glory to God. 